Nova and Butler, and Butler wins the tap for the Bruins. Madkins and Tyus Edney are in the backcourt for the Bruins. McLean, Murray, and Butler up front. Want to keep an eye on Matt Nova. He's guarding Don McLean. You know McLean can get inside and post up, and that's why Nova is guarding him. McLean now double teamed outside. Madkins for three, and that's way off the mark and out of bounds to Indiana. Well, Greg, first of all, Gerald Madkins had a, a he could have taken a dribble and got an easier shot. That was an NBA three pointer. You'll see a little bit of the jitters here at the top. Chris Reynolds with the basketball and Damon Bailey in the backcourt for Indiana. Bailey into the lane. And Cheney chases it down for the Hoosiers. Yeah, Indiana, as you may or may not know, starts slow. Here's a matchup I think is interesting. Damon Bailey has got to make Tracy Murray play defense. You know Murray can score. Make him work on the other end. Henderson missed Good the call. shot and the whistle down low is on Matt Mover number 24. That was a great call because the ball was away from the action and uh, John Clark, he was right there, and he got Matt Nova holding. The pit is packed. Oh, <laughs> and they were, they were rocking in here early, so I expected it to pick up here a little bit later. for the cut that never came from Mitch Butler. There, there was just a little bit of miscommunication. A little bit out of sync, I think, are both teams. You notice the ball isn't touching four or five people's hands, and I think that's important when you come out early, just so everybody can get the feel, get out of the little bit of the shakes and the shivers. Damon Bailey is open for three. I guess if you can get a guy to knock down a three, it'll break all of that up, though. And the Hoosier is on the board first. See, Indiana is, is trying to get somebody down on Tracy Murray right away. Girl Matkins makes that shot. That's going to free it up down low for McLean. Nova. And little Tyus Edney at 5'10. The freshman comes away with the rebound. Madkins. Oh, good ball fake. Good ball fake. I mean, he, this young man here is going to have a nice future at the next level. I mean, he can play defense. He can score. He came out of score in high school, so you know he can get it in the basket. Madkins missed his first three and hit his next two. Henderson with his second miss, and back come the Bruins with a 6-3 lead. This is something that they, they are doing a lot better, I think, at this stage of the year. We talked about the comparison of both teams. The Bruins are much more patient. You see, this is inside outside, which is just what they should do. Great rejection by Henderson. Cheney open for three. This is fairly common with Indiana, but for UCLA, they need to take advantage of the slow start. As, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things Jim Herrick wanted to do, keep Indiana way down once they start slow. Henderson comes away with the rebound for Indiana. And Cheney into the lane. That'll be a blocking foul. That's on Mitchell Butler, who got into foul trouble early in the game against New Mexico State two nights ago. Well, he did get into foul trouble, Greg, but I think what we saw in that game, and we can expect to see in this game, is that what you, UCLA is a team that's deep. You know, they can go get Derek Martin to play a little bit. They've got Ed O'Bannon to come off the bench, so they've got people that can pick up the slack there. I would really work to make play defense. As you see Calvert Chaney knock it down, it's Murray and McLean. And on the other end, I'd make Calvert Chaney play defense so he's not getting jump shots or he's not as, as springy because he had to work on the other end. 6-5, Bruins. 16 and a half minutes to play, first half. West Regional Championship. The winner goes to Minneapolis. That's, that's on the ball. 
travel violation. That's why I think that one of the players that may become important is Derek Martin because with Edney, he may start too far, one dribble too far, and then he loses his pivot, goes down, and that official makes the appropriate call. But with Edney, he's a young player, so he may make some mistakes like that. You can't afford many a game for a regional championship. Edney has only been a starter for UCLA since the tournament began. This is fourth start, and Cheney went right around his man and then missed the layup. Got indecisive as to whether to dunk it or lay it in. second block of the game for Henderson. Reynolds to Nover. Offensive foul. I think they took the basket away too. And we'll take time out with 15.52 to play in the first half. Here's Bob Knight as that play developed. Word on the street was they were a bad bet. An American institution, three days shy of extinction. Only one investment firm, Dean Witter, saw past the problems to the real value of the company. And a rumble was heard round Wall Street as the last American motorcycle company came roaring back to life with a listing on the New York Stock Exchange. From Main Street to Wall Street, at Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. Getting to know you. The uh, Geo Metro, it, it sips gas and it barely uses any. My friends think my Metro is great because of the gas mileage that it gets. All the money that I save on gas, I put away for a rainy day. I feel really sorry for gas station attendants as I drive by. The Metro gets more ways per gallon. Getting to know you. Sir, up. Now's the time to get to know the Geo Metro XF5 right around the corner at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Tie game, back after this. Twist off 7-Up Caps and win as the Uncola celebrates the 100th year of basketball. Collect all the 7-Up Caps you can because if you spell Y-E-A-R, you'll win a $10,000 college scholarship or win a Spalding mini basketball instantly. So collect your Uncola Caps and win. 7-Up employees not eligible. <laughs> win part of a million dollars in scholarships from 7-Up, the Uncola. They came from different cultures, from different worlds, to create Expo 92. To help them work together, Xerox designed the largest local area network in Europe, linking thousands of people to share ideas and create the documents that let people discover the best in each other. Putting it together. Networking, scanning, printing. Xerox, the document. Based on the true story, he charmed women and took them for everything. I need $25,000 more. But their revenge was his worst nightmare. The Highway Heartbreaker, Sunday. You gotta be able to get people to protect the basket because you know it's gonna be difficult. If you get one on Tracy Murray, that forces him back out on the perimeter. And now, you've got to look for him inside because Allen Henderson has blocked two shots. When you go to the basket, people will look for Henderson and let's watch and see if, if UCLA does a good job of getting it to his man. Henderson, a 6'9 freshman, and Bob Knight has already made two substitutions into the game. Our number 23, Jamal Meeks, and number 32, Eric Anderson, who just lit it up for 24 points in 31 minutes two nights ago against Florida State. Well, what they get in Meeks, you get a little bit of a, a, a better ball handler than Reynolds. Reynolds is a better defender, and when you get in Anderson, as you just said, you get not only his jump shooting ability, but his leadership, which is something that will be needed. Chain. UCLA quickly ahead, and Butler will now slow it down. Got Eric Anderson now guarding Don McClain. Edney. So he's, he's got to make that shot if he's going to be on Don McClain's side, because if you don't, you saw that Jamal Meeks was giving McClain a lot of trouble. So if Edney doesn't make it, then you've got to come in with Derek Martin to get Mackins to make the pass. Here's Eric Anderson. And 10 
Henderson, who has been very tough on the board so far, has the offensive rebound and drew a foul. Well, Greg, that's one of his real strengths, Allen Henderson, is his ability to, to get some offensive rebounds. And I think the way both teams shoot and are starting out slowly offensively, that early in the game, offensive rebound putbacks could be big. That's the first foul on Tracy Murray. Henderson going to go right at it. Well, I tell you what, Tracy Murray never put up any resistance. He's got to put his body in position and just hold it, or Allen Henderson will have him under the basket. And almost a throw away by the freshman, Edney. McLean yet to get on the board. And Murray spins inside for two. Nice move inside. He put the ball in Henderson's face to make him stay down on his feet. So we're uh, almost six minutes into the game before either of the Eminem boys gets on the board, and Murray is the first. Cheney. Trying to draw the foul on the shot. There is Henderson again, and he had it stripped from behind. Bailey. That's what Damon Bailey plays. He kept the ball alive, and then Edney knocked it free to get it back to Bailey. Bailey has five. And the foul is on Bailey. We're going to give Damon Bailey a break and bring in Greg Graham. Very good athlete. Can score. He played, I thought, pretty well when they played the game on Thursday night. So he, he can come in and bring a little bit more athletic ability. And Jim Herrick is making a substitution, a good one, with Derek Martin. And he also brought in Ed O'Bannon. With Martin, a little older player, with O'Bannon, you get an athlete and a 6'8", 6'9", athlete at that. O'Bannon's going to be a great player when he gets his confidence. That confidence lacking because he's really seeing his first solid action since surgery on that knee a year ago in October. See, Indiana is switching. and the plane comes out, they ran, they let Calvert Chaney stay on the top to guard him. Matkin, three-pointer on the way. And another rebound for Henderson. does a good job getting back getting back established position making you run your offense with some patience As Henderson again goes right back up and another tap before it goes out of bounds and belongs to Indiana well, you know that Don McLean is having some trouble getting position watch his right arm while he swings it around on Calvert Chaney trying to get around to establish position this is a tough game there's going to be some contact and that's a foul on matching and the whistle blows underneath. John Clockerty says the foul is on number 12, Gerald Madkin. Allen Henderson with seven rebounds already in this game. Here comes number 21, Sean Tarver, a 6'5 sophomore. He'll replace Tracy Murray. He's a player that's come in. He was starting for a while. They took him out of the starting lineup, but he's a, he can defend. Look at Eric Anderson being guarded by O'Bannon. You've got to test O'Bannon to see what kind of confidence he has in his way. Graham on the drive, missed the layup, and the whistle goes against Calvert Chaney. Calvert Chaney of Indiana. Yeah, on the follow-up, there's no question about it, but Greg Graham has got to make the layup. I think he got there. It was so wide open that he, he was off stride and just never, never regathered himself. That's why Chaney gets the foul. Quinn, if you're Indiana, I think you have to be pleased that you always have to try to stop one of the M&M boys getting off early. Neither Murray or McLean has been able to do that yet. Well, I would agree with you, and if you know that Indiana is a slow starting team, then they've been able to slow down so far at UCLA and, and they're not out of the game because they really haven't shot it well either. Cheney with the rebound and off comes Jamal Meeks for Eric Anderson. When you get rebound, as Indiana has been doing, you get yourself in position to make some fast breaks, and, and that's what's happened because you notice UCLA is getting one shot at the basket. They're not getting any offensive rebound. 11 to 8. Hoosiers by 3, 12 20 to play first half. Oh my goodness, what a Don nice shot. McLean off the baseline for his first basket. How about behind the basket on the baseline? Cheney has range, but on his, he's more comfortable to me 
with his turnaround because he gets a rhythm. Winner of this game is the first team into the Final Four. Later today, Duke against Kentucky. Anderson takes it away from McLean. I think he may have gotten away with a foul on that one, Greg. Well, it might have been a takeaway, but it, it might have been a foul. They got him. They got Mackins on. Oh, they just switched it back. Anderson. Anderson. What I was about to say, Eric Anderson was being guarded by Mackins, and when they switched it, they couldn't get Mackins away from Eric Anderson. That's how he was able to get his hand on that. The Hoosiers have been all over the offensive board. McLean, they get out there. Harbor in the lane. The follow doesn't go. Henderson with another rebound. Teams have been going at a nice little clip. You want to watch the turnovers right about now because guys are, are tired. And no, the people, you, if you watch now, you won't see as quick a cut. Anderson. Great read off of the pick. The guy, the defender, went on the high side of the pick. And if he goes the high side, if you go underneath, you drift back to the corner. That's what Anderson did. That's how we started off the game on Thursday with the same play. UCLA trails by seven. 10-15 to play first half. McLean. Trying to take it in his own hands, Greg. And that's a mistake. they've got is Eric Anderson being guarded by O'Bannon, and O'Bannon's trying to make sure he can help out. That's Anderson again, inside. And O'Bannon's trying to help out, and he can't get out on Anderson. And Jim Herrick will send Mitch Butler back into the lineup along with Tracy Murray. Some of this is just being tired, as you, as you look at it here late. UCLA is tired. inside and reaching in for the foul Sean Tarver great UCLA one shot and, and they're not getting the rebound I think they've got to move the basketball around three or four times and get a chance so they can slice in to get some putbacks off the offensive rebound 9 23 to play first half Dear Thompsons, I swear by Thompsons water seal, but recently when it ran out, my son finished with another brand. Then it rained. What a difference. Thompsons beat it up, the other brand nothing. Thanks for a product you can believe in. Marvin Snotty, Locust Grove, Virginia. If you've been looking for a lawn tractor for under $2,000, Now you can set your sights a little higher. Buy a quality John Deere lawn tractor. Now just $19.99. Maybe your first car shouldn't be a car. I was 18. Didn't have a care. Working for peanuts. Not a dime to spare. Get this Chevy S10 EL pickup with cash back for around $8,000. Chevrolet. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. Like a rock. Oh, like a rock. Yo, what's up? Sit back here. This is my team. Now, we wear black top it. only outdoors. You see a team like this. I got my man too tall. Show him why you too tall. That's his thing. I got my man Reg. Show him, brother. Woo! Show him up, man. Show him, show him, show him, show Big foot Clemente. What kind of shoe you wear? Black cat. Ogie, Ogie, Ogie. He just whip you in the head with that hair. Whip, 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 whip. Slim got to play outside. You put him inside, he's gonna hurt somebody. Show that two-inch vertical, brother. And of course, I'm the man Sinbad, the greatest outdoor player to ever live. Reebok Blacktop. 
four wild and crazy guys it's great to be young and insane are on the loose <laughs> michael keaton and christopher lloyd lead the dream team tonight Indiana shot the ball so well outside that you've got to be concerned about him out here. If you watch, everybody takes a run that way and then letting Allen Henderson just slide right through the middle, enabling him to get an offensive rebound. Worried about the jump shooters? You've got to remember to block out. They don't. You see Henderson has inside position, easy put back. There's a, some lack of concentration going on, as evident by the fact that Indiana has 17, UCLA 8. UCLA must block out on the offensive, on their defensive end, and then they've got to get more aggressive on their offensive end going to try to get some putbacks of their own. Allen Henderson has out-rebounded UCLA by himself. He has nine. Graham. And Butler into the lineup with a rebound. The M&M boys, McLean and Murray, are a combined two for seven from the floor so far. Murray makes it two for eight, and another rebound for the Hoosiers. The guards are really doing a good job for Indiana, getting back to help the rebound. Again, I think that UCLA is a little bit impatient. When you got a guy like Tracy Murray that knows he can score, sometimes he gets hurried just thinking he can get any shot in. Bailey, off the screen. Those screens are the reason Indiana gets to shoot a lot of foul shots. You and I, most people are not accustomed to hitting solid screens the way Indiana does them. And later in the game, we'll have to watch it. That's when people try to run through them and get called for fouls. This screen got Bailey open on that one. Tarver. Sean Tarver hits a three-pointer to get UCLA back on track. And it's 21-13. But you notice the ball movement got him a wide-open jump shot. Good fake by Anderson. And he draws the foul from Mitchell Butler. Greg, the reason that Anderson gets that is because he's made the jump shot. But the other thing, Mitchell Butler is about three and a half or maybe four inches smaller than Anderson. So when Anderson looks like he's going to raise it up to score, Anderson has to go up early. I'm sorry, Butler does. He did that time, and that's how Anderson gets around it. Got to stay on your feet when you play defense. You see this. Stitches in Eric Anderson's chin. He suffered that in a collision in the Florida State game two nights ago and played a little bit of the game with some blood dripping from his chin. Uh, just a moment. Uh, you're talking about a collision with the floor, let's say. <laughs> Three number one seeds playing in regional finals. Duke will play later today. And we'll take a timeout with 7.58 to play in the first half and Indiana leading it by 10. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. Like a rock. Every Chevy S10 Blazer gives you the security of four-wheel anti-lock brakes, standard, which helps you steer through a curve while braking. Without it, you don't have as much control. And now get the security of S10 Blazer plus $1,000 cash back only from Chevrolet. Like a rock. Chevy trucks. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. Where do you want to be in 10 years? Detroit to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Detroit. That's not why I became a pilot. I'll tell you the run I want. St. Thomas to Saba Island. In my own Grumman Mallet. Call it Dave's Airways. That's what I want for my investment. How do we do it? You can get there from here with Shearson Lehman Brothers. Forget about one size fits all as a marketing strategy. Today you have to make each customer feel unique. At AT&T we have a range of calling plans that match the way small companies do business. In 1978 I created my first racing wheelchair. Today I make it for people all over the world. Probably 99% of my business is done long distance. AT&T created ProWatts for businesses that depend on long distance. The more you call, the higher the discount. We're based in Oakland, but we do a lot of business with L.A. and Seattle. at and small business option area code plan gives an automatic 10% discount on the one or two area codes they call most. We sell toys from all over the world. We call Russia, Hungary, China. We're working now out of three locations just to fill the demand. For small businesses that have grown to more than one location, 
A custom that plan combines their long distance bills for the maximum possible discount. Rule number one is know the customer, and I would say rule number two is know the customer as well. We can make a difference. AT&T, call us. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Back in Albuquerque, number one seed UCLA, number two seed Indiana, playing for the West Regional Championship. Later, it'll be number one seed Duke against number two Kentucky for the East Regional title. And the winners of those two regions will play each other in Minneapolis next weekend. See Don McLean getting a little bit of a rest. He's one for five and has two points. And one of the reasons Indiana has this lead is that 16 to four rebounding. They've been able to do that. Derek Martin rejected by Eric Anderson. Bailey in the lane. If you're playing defense, the number one thing you've got to do on a fast break is stop the ball. UCLA has a very small lineup in here, if you will. They've got Mitchell Butler and Sean Carver at about 6'4", 6'5", and then they've got uh, Martin, and, and, and rebounding is where they'll get hurt. Three on two. Chris Reynolds. This, this is a real gamble on the part of, of Jim Herrick. He hadn't been able to get anything out of O'Bannon or McLean, so he went with a smaller lineup to just try to outquick Indiana. The question is now, you know that uh, Tracy Murray is going to get his points. They've got to find some other options because you know Indiana will play particular attention to Murray. Madkins and McLean set to come back on the next whistle. The shot clock is down to 14 seconds because they don't have any other option. Edney, three-pointer around and out, and that's out of bounds to UCLA. When you get the ball on the break, you've got to be able to get it to the center, center the ball right away. And now you make Edney, number 11, make a decision. Forced it to him early. Edney tried to get the charge, just not there in time. But you always center the ball, keep it in, in the center of the court to make the defense react. You and see, with the McLean and with Matkins back in, then Bob Knight gets a little taller by bringing the freshman Allen Henderson back. Brings him back in. McLean comes in because Jim Herrick saw he just didn't have any offense going out there. Here's McLean. And the tap in is good. And one of the few offensive putbacks that UCLA's had all afternoon. 27 15, 6 20 to play. Trying to use some patience with Butler trying to guard Anderson. Still plenty of time left on the shot clock. They've got 16 seconds. I think UCLA is doing a good job. They're making Indiana keep the ball. The ball has never gone to the left side of the court. And that foul is on Anderson. Block out by Butler. But UCLA did a good job keeping the ball on one side of the court. And if you don't swing it, you got very little chance for the help side to be open and you can position yourself to get some easy baskets. That's why the long jump shot. Bob Knight. Winning three national championship teams, 1976, 1981, and 1987. Murray, and that one's blocked by Alan Henderson. And Tracy Murray showing a little frustration there. Well, he knows that he needs to get going offensively. That's the second block that he's had, uh, Alan Henderson has had. You see Henderson goes. The shot goes up, but he blocks it left-handed. And the one thing that's an advantage, if you are blocking the shot on a right-handed shot, it's easier to get your left hand over to make the block than the right one. And to be able to do that cleanly is what Allen Henderson did. You mentioned Tracy Murray trying to get off to a good start. He got off from the outside against New Mexico State the other night. Well, the other thing about Tracy Murray that they, they talk to people about, when he gets off to a slow start, sometimes the rest of his game will go away. For example, his defense may suffer, so we'll keep an eye on that. Anderson Henderson, Jamal Meeks, Damon Bailey, and Greg Graham. Graham on the drive, drew the foul from Matkin. The defense just spread, and Greg, it looked like the Rio Grande. <laughs> it was so wide open. I mean, coming right at you, look, all of a sudden, Edney is the guy that is probably should get over there. You see Murray tried to stay out, gets over. Well, I'll tell you what, 
that was a pretty interesting look. I'm, I'm looking to see where he got hit there, but the official obviously in better position. Oh, he got him on the top right. of the head. Damon Bailey takes the rest on the bench with nine points. And Calvert Cheney is back in the lineup. But Damon Bailey out of the lineup, he obviously lose. I think some ball handling and, and just some general skills of dribbling will have you. Calvert Cheney, you know that he's he's going to try to get on track because if you switch one of the smaller players on him, he's just going to post them up. Five minutes to play, first half. Matthews. And that's just awful transition on the part of Indiana. Good push up by UCLA. Good recognition. 28-17. Mentioned Jamal Meets' ball handling abilities. Cheney on the baseline. And the plane fouled by Henderson. And he got the plane for Tony. No, I believe he got Jamal Meeks. Oh, did he get Jamal Meeks for it? Well, I tell you, you should have. If you go back, Don McClain on the play. Now, you watch this. Inside, all right, there may be some contact here, but Don McClain tells him to get, get away from him very uh, emphatically, and Jamal Meeks heard it. And everybody knows Don McClain has a tendency to do that kind of thing. No American pie at all times on the court? No, he's a competitor. Sure. He, he competes, and, and part of what he does is he, is he talks. Now watch, it's, it's, you'll see it right here. Watch him. That's when Jamal Meeks came back and uh, stepped between Henderson and McLean. Well, John Clockerty got right in on that, but just prior to that was when Don McLean had started, because I just happened to be watching him just to see his reaction to the play. Yeah. And the conversation continues between David Hall and John Clockerty, the officials at center court. Well, it's a dead ball. It's just probably a technical on me. Yeah, it looks that way. They're giving them two shots. Did they call it double? They may have called it on both. So McLean will go to the line. We do have double technical, so we'll go to the other end. The double technical, the UCLA's ball. Both of these guys, the Fisher's doing a good job now. You've got to remember, these young guys are emotional. They've got a lot of things going on, but this gives a little bit of uh, UCLA a chance to score with no clock running. Don McLean has now made 30 consecutive free throws in this tournament and is within six of the UCLA record, LA record set by Henry Bibby back in 1972. Calvert Cheney, an 80% free throw shooter himself. But again, let's commend the officials for staying on top of it. This is one way to keep the emotion out of it. Now, the ball was UCLA's, but it goes with the arrow. They should have the basketball. No, now we're going to have a conversation again. Possession arrow says Indiana. No, the possession arrow now is pointing at UCLA. Did they give it? Oh, you know what they did? They switched the arrow already. But there would be normally a jump ball, and then if you go with the arrow, the arrow had already been switched. Indiana ball leading 29-19. Only a one-point swing after all the technical fouls were shot. Jamal Meeks, three-pointer. the guy that wants to step it up right here. Tried to get his own rebound and put him and here come the Hoosiers. And as a gamble when you do that, you leave your man open right here. You gotta be careful of going at your own shot when you're the last guy back to defense because if you don't, your man is starting in the other direction. They just call a foul on Joel Matkins trying to get position inside on Greg Graham. And that's three on Matkins. Boy, he has been a, a pillar of strength for them throughout the tournament. That's going. That's a tough one to have happen to you right here with 3.50 to go. He's their best defensive stopper. Sean Carver can be one, but Matt Kent has the confidence to stop. Carver will replace Madkins in the lineup. Madkins 
averaging almost 16 a game in the tournament, and that's nice support for McLean and Murray. Well, it's not only that, Greg. I just his demeanor. He is a, a, a tough, tough kid. So he was in there trying to get some position. Got a little over aggressive, but I like the way he's just been a leader. that at the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game. And in conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both schools. Greg Graham shooting the second. And we'll take time with 3.49 to play in Indiana in the lead. Service to more cities across the Atlantic than any other U.S. airline, Delta now makes it easier than ever for the people of America to get to know the people of Europe. Buongiorno. Bonjour. See ya. Good dark. Ritchie. Delta. Strasburg. It is one of the most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. The Big Q is one top motor oil. Think about who you'll be driving around over the next, say, seven days. That's how long your dealer said it would take before he could fix your brakes. At Midas, we can fix them right the same day you bring in your car. Midas, because your brakes can't wait. You can ski a live volcano. Take a dip in the Colorado. Take your bike way up in the blue. Get your tidal wave and go. You can sled without the snow. But you've never done nothing like a diet, too. Full tilt taste. You won't believe it's a diet. You can leap. You can fly. Take a ride in the sky. But you've never done nothing like a diet, too. Cadillac announces two new ways to bolster your economy. Buy now and you'll receive a $1,500 cash bonus direct from Cadillac with any new 92 DeVille, Fleetwood, or Brougham. Or if you prefer, special smart lease terms are also available. But like any smart investment, timing is everything. And with a $1,500 cash bonus direct from Cadillac, the time to bolster your economy is now. Skiing superstars Bill Johnson, Phil Mayer, Franz Plummer, and more compete at the American Ski Classic Sunday on CBS. Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner, Andrea Joyce back at the pit, 33-19 Indiana. Quinn, UCLA just isn't getting anything off its bench. Well, they haven't this game. They had 15 points off the bench on Thursday, and that's been part of the problem. And the other, the one of the guys that really hadn't been able to get into the swing of things on the bench was Derek Martin. I thought he was really good for him. He had not, he doesn't have any production of substance as of yet. By comparison, Eric Anderson has scored 10 for Indiana off the Hoosier bench. They call that a block against Mitchell Butler. He tried to set a pick as one of the UCLA players was making the cut, and the official called the block. That's three on Butler. So Madkins and Butler, each with three personal fouls now. You know, we're talking about the UCLA bench when McLean and Murray have only combined for eight points between them. And that's, that's, that's a below par for them. Well, not only is it below par, that's why the bench is so much more important to them. Ed O'Bannon is getting up. He's the guy that has the skills to do it. The confidence has been the question. He played better the other day, but he just hadn't been able to get going. Now, in the center of your screen, you see Butler, and you know why they call the foul? It's because he moved forward to put the shoulder in. You're allowed to set that pick if you stand there and keep your arms low. Mitchell Butler did not do that. He came into the Indiana player and, and gave him a good little shot there. Cheney makes a 35-19 Indiana lead. Cheney has seven as we approach three and a half minutes to play. McLean, Murray, Edney, O'Bannon, and Sean Tarver in the lineup for UCLA. McLean again, and McLean has six. Uh, he will keep working for his offense. That's what I like about it. And that little mean streak makes you do that. You, you compete knowing that you can get it done. Offensive foul. 
and that'll be on Henderson. That should be his second. A little bit is that is Jamal Meek's fault because one of the tough plays to make is to slide the ball right down the lane. What you've got to do is move over about three steps on the foul line and then make the pass, and then it comes right to Henderson. He doesn't get the foul. Only two turnovers here in the first half so far for Indiana. UCLA has turned it over seven times. And Henderson to the bench, Matt Nover onto the floor for the Hoosiers. And here's the freshman, Ed O'Bana. Great, UCLA just hadn't been able to get anything to go with it. They get three shots, no time running, stepped out of bounds. But they, they, they are having real trouble getting it together. But the problem happens, and it shouldn't happen with the old team, uh, team with experience. You can't get four points down every time. You just got to take two at a time. Ten points combined for the high-scoring forward tandem, the Bruins. You got to know, when you play against score like McLean and Murray, they'll just keep going until they knock it down. That's just the nature of a score. O'Bannon, three-pointer. See, that's the kind of thing he can do, and he can put it on the floor and go. So that may be a little, a little bit of the push they need to get themselves started here. Coming up on two and a half to play. UCLA down 11. If you've got Cheney or Anderson at the top of the key handling the basketball, Indiana is not at their best. <laughs> Anderson gets the roll. That's where they need to be, down on the block. And UCLA were forcing them up to handle the basketball. Anderson has 12. Indiana has a 13-point lead. And he didn't make a jump shot. That's why he can't get that pass in. If he makes a shot, you got to guard him. Edney will start it over from the top. Murray fighting for position with Nover down low. He's fighting for position, but he, he, there's no perimeter shooting on the part of UCLA. You know, you let Tarver go to the basket, there's no perimeter shooting at all. Tarver cuts Indiana's lead to 11. He has five. And we have a minute 20 to play. Edley's going to take this ball one time from Greg Graham, because that Greg Graham doesn't look very comfortable with the handle. Cheney on the move on the baseline. If O'Bannon had the confidence that he normally has, he's got Calvert Chaney. He's got three inches on him. you got to take him down on the block. O'Bannon instead setting picks at the top of the key. Yeah, he's got, he's got to get himself more into the game. He's edging for O'Bannon. And the foul is called. It's number one on Jamal Meeks and Damon Bailey. Onto the floor for number 20, Greg Graham. Coming up at the half, we'll send you back to New York. Pat O'Brien standing by. And a look ahead to uh, Duke and Kentucky and then win two more games tomorrow. Great weekend for me. I'm, I'm a television basketball person, so I'm, I'm all set for tomorrow. That's one of the things that Ed O'Bannon has to work on. If you're going to work that hard, you've got to be able to get some foul shots. And he's only a 63% foul shooter. You see Eric Anderson already over his season average. But that's been the way he's played through the tournament. With a little more sense of purpose, much better focus, particularly on the shooting end. As you see UCLA moving up that defense a little bit on the guards. 45 seconds in the first half and a foul in the backcourt from Tarver. And that's not what you want out of the defense. You want to just make contain so you can make sure you're coming back on the other end. You've got some time on the clock. This UCLA team has a reputation of being streaky and being having its highs and lows, its peaks and valleys. It could come out in the second half and be a completely different ball club. Well, you know, their big problem has been great. They just haven't shot the ball well. Some of it is due to Indiana's defense. Some of it is just they've missed some open shots. And, and, and yes, they're very capable of coming out and pushing the tempo up. They're not a team with uh, a, a lot of real height because they, you know, McLean and Murray are basically the big people they play. So they can get some numbers up in a hurry in the second half. 
Bailey has two more. He has 11. And we have 40 seconds remaining. The one thing you know, Tracy Murray is a three-point shooter. He can get him up, no doubt. Andre Patello blows the, the whistle on Eric Anderson. Eric said, what? Bob Knight says, what? Well, Eric Anderson tries to front down the plane. There's a lot of moving around on, because I was looking at the play. You see right in the center of your screen, you see Eric Anderson, 32, he's got his arm up. They call a foul. <laughs> that's, our, that's our analyst, Quinn Buckner. <laughs> no, it looked like the arms might have hooked a little bit, but I, it was hard to see from that. <laughs> but, but you didn't see it, did you? No, I didn't, so I can't say it was there, but I, the official did, and that's all that matters. McLean's consecutive free throw streak ends at 30. No shot clock. Indiana will work for the last shot of the half. Well, all of the guys have been shooting it pretty well. If I'm looking to get it to anybody, I want to get it to Calvert Chaney because I know that he can put it on the floor. Bailey, three-pointer out of the corner. Got it. Edney at the buzzer. Oh, it's down. Yeah. Tyus Edney at the buzzer after Bailey hit the three out of the corner. Well, the one thing you need to do is pick people up before they get down. He shoots the ball off balance, gets it in. Now, this is this is good for UCLA because it gives them some, some hope for the way they've been shooting the ball. Now they get one that bounces in with a shooter's touch. That's the end of the first half with the score, Indiana 44, UCLA 20. Sign and CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship continues after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Final Game is sponsored by Dean Witter. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. And by AT&T, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. Power windows are just one of the many useful features you get with the extra value auction package on the 1992 Toyota 4Runner. So is air conditioning. Power door locks, cruise control, power side mirrors, and special chrome trim. Of course, up to $900 savings is a pretty nice feature, too. And just imagine what you can do with that. Dean Witter believed in listening. Listen, not only to what our clients say, but what they mean. Each client has a level of comfort. Endeavor to find it. We measure success one investor at a time. Hit Pizza Hut for a supreme pizza loaded with six delicious toppings like mouth-watering pepperoni, mushrooms, and green peppers. Right now, get a medium supreme for $7.99 and any other medium for just four bucks more. Get Pizza Hut tonight! I've known Jenny since high school, so everybody agreed that it was up to me. I went over there, we talked about the party, I asked her if she remembered me driving her home. Then I told her about all the stuff she did when she was drunk. She got really mad. But I said, hey, Jen, it's me. You need to know. This is CBS. These are my new shoes from Converse. They're so light and so fast, my grandma can whoop you in them. Grab my mom! Let's go. What? 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 Shoot that dude out. I'm looking all night. Move it, Granny. Move it. <laughs> Remember, you can't beat what you can't catch. Okay, Granny. One on one. Me and you. That was a lucky shot, Grandma. Some people don't have a great shopping experience because not everyone shops H.H. H. Gregg. It was a horrible, dirty, filthy place. You can tell the difference right away. I, I should have shopped H.H. H. Gregg. Our salespeople are not only friendly, they actually know what they're talking about. I didn't want a stove. I wanted a TV. 
honest low prices on name brand appliances and electronics. There is a difference at H.H. Gregg. Little halftime entertainment there from Albuquerque as Indiana and UCLA are at halftime. Uh, the Hoosiers up 44 to 29 at the half. And hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. He's Mike Francesa. Yep. He's Digger Phelps. And uh, Indiana is focused, focused, focused Big for this time. game. They didn't shoot well coming out of the box, but once they got it rolling, killed them. Front line scoring 25-10. Rebounds dig at 23-14. And they got your guy, Damon Bailey, in the game early. If you look at Indiana, when they rebound against people, they concentrate and they beat people offensively. Henderson did a great job blocking shots on the board, scoring offensive tips, the balance in the front line, scoring, Bailey scoring, Eric Anderson, Anderson scoring. Chipped in with 12. How does Harry get the Bruins back in? Well, you got to tell McLean and Murray, the M&M guys, get it done. They're 4 for 13 from the floor. They have to do it. A reminder that's still ahead at 7 o'clock Eastern time, Kentucky and Duke in another showdown of number one and number two seeds. Christian Leitner paces the Blue Devils, of course, and uh, Coach Mike Krzyzewski, Credits him with uh, picking up the slack when Bobby Hurley and Grant Hill went down with injuries. And as Leslie Visser reports, Leitner's successes have turned him into more and more of a star. I don't think there's any big man that's played basketball in a long time, college or pro, that's as versatile offensively as Christian is. I really love coaching Christian because he's uh, probably the most competitive and he's certainly as talented as, as anyone. He's as good a player as, as played at our school. The four years that Christian's had stands, it could be compared to anybody. I, I think he's a, he's a fabulous player. Leitner, who's about to break Elvin Hayes' all-time tournament scoring record, has already passed such magical names as Bill Bradley, Lou Alcindor, and Oscar Robertson. But the real story about him has also emerged off the court. The best way to think about it is if I was the 10th person on the Duke team or if I didn't play that much, none of this attention would be brought to me. People say, it's because of the way I look, I have no idea. And uh, I, lo I love it, you know. It's better than going out there and being booed at and sworn at and stuff like that. He has only a handful of games left in a remarkable career. A unanimous All-American, a national champion, and a budding sex symbol. It is fitting that Christian Leitner was named after a movie star. Christened Christian after a character Marlon Brando played in The Young Lions, Leitner has been ferocious for the Blue Devils while being featured in everything from press guides to people to a future cover on GQ. This center of attention has become a kind of matinee idol, and thousands of teenage girls not only follow him, they'd like to get to know him. The letters do get a little offbeat every once in a while, and we love you and marry you and stuff like that. There's you know, probably about 20 people, girls, who they write once a week or twice a week. And in that case, you just put their letters aside and send them an autograph maybe once a month, something like that. Well, if I'm a college basketball player, there's a list I want to be on. I think the numbers are meaningless, Pat, because he's played more games. The numbers that are important with Leitner are wins and losses. He raises his game, and I think he's as mentally tough a player as we've seen in a long time. What's amazed me about him, the way he's shooting his three, 60% lately? Yep. I mean, that's incredible for a guy his size to do that. I still want to be on the list. Come on. <laughs> Tomorrow, of course, the final two stops on the road to the final four. We'll start our coverage at 1 o'clock Eastern. Memphis State and Cincinnati will tip in Kansas City at 1.42 Eastern time. Michigan and top-seeded Ohio State will complete the puzzle. Tip timing Lex Lexington is 4 o'clock Eastern. The Buckeyes haven't been to the final four since 1968. And now Randy Ayers, in his third season at the helm, has them one victory away from the big dance in the Twin Cities. And Coach Ayers uh, joins us live now from Lexington. And thanks for joining us. Uh, what did you learn from your loss last year to St. John's? What did you bring from that to this tournament? Well, I think uh, uh, we were sort of emotionally tired last year, Pat, at this time. And, and we really cut back on the amount of time that we spent on the court to try to keep our legs fresh and try to stay fresh from a, an emotional, mental standpoint. And I think it's really helped us. Uh, so far this year. Randy, I think a big key and what makes the team so tough right now has been the maturation of Lawrence Funderburk. He's been through a lot, but last night's game a great example of how much he's come along as a player. Well, that's exactly right. Uh, Lawrence has matured. He, he's blended well with this ball club. Uh, gives us another uh, uh, inside score along with Chris Janton. Uh, he just keeps getting better and better, and I, I think as uh, he spends a little bit more time in our program, I think he'll develop into a great player. Randy, Jalen Rose against you. The first two games goes 11 for 33. Last night, 8 for 14, 
Michigan's in foul trouble. He takes the game over with 25 points. You concerned about Rose's play lately? Uh, very concerned. I, I think Jalen's one of the uh, uh, best players in our conference, regardless of class. And I, I really like him from a mental standpoint. He really understands the game of basketball and uh, very versatile, possesses a lot of skills, uh, just like our uh, Jimmy Jackson. And speaking of Jimmy Jackson, what did you say to him at halftime last night to get him going in the second half? Could you hear the question there, Coach? Well, you, yes. Yeah. What did you say well, to Jimmy we, at halftime? Well, we just told Jimmy to get a little bit more involved, to be patient, that his shots would start to fall. And uh, being the type of player he is, uh, Jimmy, if he's not scoring, concentrates on other things. And we were just happy that he got a couple shots to go down as well because that just completes his total game. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us. I know you got a lot of work to do. Good luck down the road, and we'll see you. Okay, thank you. He's done well in preparing his team this year. I think he has. I think he took a lot from that loss to St. John's. And Jimmy Jackson is the guy, Pat, who has to step up for them tomorrow. He is the guy. Coach. The key to their season, when they lost to Indiana the second time in Columbus, they went to Purdue and Michigan State, won two big road games, and they haven't stopped their momentum. One more time, I still want to be on that list, but later. <laughs> right now it's time for Greg and Quinn to go back to work. Indiana or UCLA is one half away from the Final Four. We'll send you back to Albuquerque as at the half rolls on from New Amsterdam to New Mexico here on CBS. Things are different. The all-new Grand Am Sports Sedan proves it. Things are better because inside and out, the Grand Am's equipped to perform. And it even gives you better mileage than a Accord or Camry for a whole lot less. In fact, Consumers Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am. A new kind of excitement. Education is the underlying basis for whatever success we have. Athletics may have opened some doors which might not otherwise have been opened, but it's the education which allows us to choose between which doors to walk in. No matter what we accomplish in life, no matter what we have accomplished in life, it is education which makes the difference. The message is going out that education is important. Athletes are role models. And as role models, we have the unique opportunity to send that message. It is our opportunity to influence the future. And children are the future. The education of today's student athletes is crucial because they are tomorrow's leaders. They are tomorrow's role models. When student athletes perform and achieve in the classroom, everybody wins. And one of the lessons that I've learned over the years is that you can never have too many winners. We'll return to the pit in Albuquerque after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. The new Mercedes 400E has a 268 horsepower, 32 valve V8 to move you. Standard dual airbags to help protect you. And a distinct advantage many cars won't have for years. It meets current 1997 federal side impact protection standards today. It makes a test drive worth your time. And our new Mercedes-Benz 400E, well worth the difference. Winner. All right. Emmy winner. <laughs> Golden Globe winner. People's Choice winner. You know, you're practically a legend. A legend, Dad. It's a night of award winning comedy all Monday. All those who love great comedy say hi. 
Have you ever dreamed you could fly? Now, the world's greatest illusionist conquers the mystery of human flight without wings, strings, or camera tricks. An all-new Magic of David Copperfield, Tuesday. This is CBS. What am I going to do? About what? Protecting my hard-earned money. <laughs> What's the worry? Come on, you've heard the news. Who can you trust anymore? Maybe you need to do a little homework. So you're not worried? Well, let's just say I made a rock-solid decision years ago. Confidence. Get the feeling at INB. Why are you drinking so much coffee, Charlie? I'm about to have a Farm Bureau insurance client account review and evaluation. That's just a fancy name for saying your Farm Bureau insurance agent has this great new service designed to review all your insurance policies. You know how fast things change. Client account review and evaluation. C-A-R-E. Farm Bureau insurance really does care. So what are you so worried about? <laughs> CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Final Game is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. White Men Can't Jump, a new movie from 20th Century Fox starring Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson now playing. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. Back at the pit, we're about set for the start of the second half. Indiana leading UCLA in the West Regional Championship, 44-29. Greg Gumbel along with Quinn Buckner. Let's check in now with Andrea Joyce. Andrea. Greg, a couple of minutes ago, I spoke to former UCLA coach John Wooden, who, of course, led the Bruins to 10 national championships in the 60s and the 70s. Now, he hasn't had a whole lot of time to watch the game in the first half because he's doing a book signing at an L.A. bookstore. But he said if he were down by 15 points, the key would be patience. And that should be the message out of the locker room, not to try to make up the 15-point deficit too quickly. Back to you guys. All right, Andrea, sometimes statistics don't tell the story of the game. However, in this case, I think the first half stats do. Indiana ahead in the field goal percentage. The front court scoring. They are dominating the UCLA Bruins. And maybe more than anything else, the rebounding tells the story, Quinn. Well, I think that's absolutely the case because a lot of the rebounds for Indiana have been offensive rebounds that they've been able to put back in the basket. But what we really talked about, when you talk about Murray and McLean, they had 22 points in the first half of the game uh, on Thursday. So they've got to get on track. They only had 10 in this game. So they've got to get going offensively. One thing that you do know is that this UCLA team can put points on the board in a hurry. Interesting note that in Indiana's 26 victories this season, they've held their opponents to an average of 28.3 in the first half. UCLA scored 29. That's a shot that you want to try to stay away from if you can if you're UCLA. Even though it's a wide-open jump shot, you shoot it with still 20 seconds to go on the 45-second clock. You can work for a long period of time to get a better shot. Oh, my goodness. Got it in. And the foul is on McLean. I didn't think he had a chance to get that one in. Bob Knight starting Jamal Meeks along with Bailey, Cheney, Henderson, and Eric Anderson. Well, you see, he puts it up and then is able to bring it back a little bit because once you get the hand on the on the arm like that, what, what Alan Henderson did was draw it on a little bit more and then just power it through on Don McClain. I didn't think he had any chance to get that shot off. But that's where UCLA should be going with the basketball. Inside, trying to get some baskets, uh, or maybe getting a, a, a basket and a free throw. As you just see a nice hand there by Damon Bailey. The UCLA does a good job of keeping the ball on one side of the court because this is what can happen. There's no help that can get there. Henderson goes to the hook. And here come the Bruins. Oh, Murray, three-pointer off the mark.
Tracy Murray comes into this game shooting 62% from behind the three-point line, but has not shown that he can hit it here so far today. But one of the things that is always, not always, but it's a little bit of a, a knock on Tracy Murray, if he doesn't get off early, he has a tendency to struggle. As you see, Mitchell Butler has picked up his fourth foul. They've got to get him out of the game. But Tracy Murray has to learn if he wants to go on to the next level. Yes, you'll miss two or three, but with the kind of shooting ability he has, you just got to keep taking your shot, but in the flow of the game. I didn't think that shot was in the flow. He was number one in the Pac-10 during the regular season, shooting 52% from the field. Eric Anderson. I got it! And O'Bannon saves it. Mitchell Butler on the UCLA bench with four fouls. McLean tried to dish it off. Murray has the loose ball, and he's fouled, and will go to the line. Greg, that's the first time UCLA has pushed the ball up the court like that. They can, they're, they're good enough that if they can push it up, that Edney may be able to break Indiana down a little bit and get some passes like he did to McClain. That's number three on Allen Henderson. Now, this is one way the guy you can see shooting two for six, a score, can get some rhythm. If you get him on the foul line, he can feel like I'm getting that stroke. And then he can get UCLA ignited and get him started back. He shot that one almost like, uh, well, it was an air, almost an air ball. Tracy Murray came into this game with at least 20 a game over his last 11 games. He had 20 in the win against Robert Morris, 26 against Louisville, 21 against New Mexico State. And the, the second shot, he really stroked. The first one, he tried to place in the basket, and, that, and that's, that shows you how tough it has been for him to shoot it. He's trying to place the ball in the basket, just stroke it. Biggest lead of the day. Bailey has 17. And Murray inside for two. And that's that's swinging the ball from the strong side to the weak side. Allen Henderson, having picked up his third foul only moments ago, cannot afford to foul Tracy Murphy. I'm telling you, I think that foul shot, now the shot inside, may get Tracy Murray heated up to go. Murray with the steal. Yeah, he's, he's sharper now. Three on two for UCLA, Edney. He's sharper. Remember, as I said, when, he's, when, when Murray scores, he, he does a lot better. When he doesn't, he tends to back off defensively. <laughs> Daly finds Henderson, and Henderson is fouled in the lane. That one's on Murray. That's three on Tracy Murray. That Murray gets the foul and trying to help out. But what, what really hurt at UCLA on that one is Damon Bailey was trying to, was being guarded. As you see, the parents of uh, Tracy Murray there with his brother uh, Cameron on the right. Damon Bailey was being guarded by Anna Bannon. And there's, there's just no way you can do that. And Damon Bailey got a little winded, so they're getting him out and bringing in a quicker player and Greg Graham in. Another thing that set up that play also, Damon Bailey hitting that outside shot. Now when he drives, people are coming after him. Yeah, you make a three-pointer, believe me, you'll get everybody's attention. The freshman, Allen Henderson. has played with great patience, I think, throughout the entire tournament. You see he's got three blocks to go with 11 rebounds, and now six points. But four freshmen, plays with good patience. You see Coach Knight's wife, Karen, in the black there. Murray. And Murray starting to heat it up and a nice feed down low from Matkins. Well, you've got to look to make a change, I think, defensively. One of the options is you, you get um, Allen Henderson off of Tracy Murray because the three fouls won't allow Henderson to play aggressively defensively. Matt Nover set to come in for Indiana at the next whistle. And I, I would be willing to bet he'll come in for Henderson or somebody that will allow them to guard uh, Murray for a little more aggressive. Cheney looking for room on the baseline. Stepped out of bounds. And Nover does come in for Allen Henderson. We'll look to see if Tracy Murray now getting his inside game. 
the step out looking to get the three-pointer. You know that can really involve this UCLA crowd that really hasn't had a chance to get in the game. Edney, three-pointer. And Murray on the offensive board got the bucket and the foul. You can see he's come alive. He's, he's got that fire back in him. That's why a, a good score, you don't like to let them make any kind of basket, particularly get to the foul line, because they get their confidence. See Murray fights from the outside, gets away with a little bit of a throw, but that's all right. They didn't see it. Let them play. Able to force it up and get it back in the basket. Third foul on Matt Nova. Murray now with 12. 51, 39, Indiana. See, as UCLA is put, they've come out defensively. They put more pressure, which is a good choice on the part of uh, Coach Harris. Get out, make Indiana, make some plays. O'Bannon on Graham out front. Cheney. Matkins having four, is having three. Really going to have trouble guarding Cheney. UCLA is going to have to double Cheney. Edney pushing it back up the floor again. They call a block. In fact, the basket counts, and Edney will go to the line. Well, that's what I said. UCLA really hadn't pushed the ball up at all in the first half. Edney is the one guy that can do that. You're watching what, the pressure right here and trying to get over there and establish position was Calvert Cheney. He never made it. Edney gets in and looking to complete the three-point play. But that's the pressure pushing the ball back up. And you can sense that UCLA is starting to get their rhythm the way they like to play the game, a little bit more of tempo than it had been going. The lead was 19 two and a half minutes ago. Edney can cut it to 11. Tracy Murray. Oh, he kept that one alive. 53, 41. Hoosiers. Nover on the nice pass from Jamal Meek. That time Indiana pushed it up. And UCLA did get back in defensive transition. Nover's first basket of the day. Out of bounds to UCLA. And we'll take time with 15-15 remaining in the first half. At the NCAA Foundation, we care about the lives of all of our college and university students. That's why, with help from Anheuser-Busch, we're offering grants through our Choices Program. These grants are used to provide funding for campus-wide alcohol education programs. The goal is to eliminate underage drinking and encourage responsible decision-making in all aspects of our students' lives. Working together as a team, we can make a difference. A message from Anheuser-Busch and the NCAA Foundation. Look, they know how good you are, and they may need you later, but we won this contract because of our business and consulting expertise, not just our technology, big guy. You know what they want us to do? Integrate their inventory and manufacturing across all their divisions, plants, and suppliers. We beat up some tough competition for this. Oh, feel good. And I'm getting out of here. It's too hot. See you outside. Explain to this Gladys Knight and the pimps. Pips! The pimps! White men can't jump. Ah! You were almost there. It's a whole new ball game. Rated R. Now playing. And also from Fox. Make my cousin Vinny a part of the family. You were serious about that? The most inventive and enjoyable American film farce in a long time. Are you sure? I'm positive. My cousin Vinny. Rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Why is Henry Kissinger so upset? Maybe he thinks we know more about him than we do. Do we? Watch 60 Minutes, Sunday. 
Greg Gumbel, Quinn Buckner, Andrea Joyce here in Albuquerque. The winner of today's West Regional title is the first entry into the Final Four in Minneapolis. The second entry, well, that'll come up tonight in Philadelphia. In the East, 7 o'clock tip-off, number one Duke, number two seed, Kentucky. You know, you've got to give the NCAA selection committee credit. I mean, you want to get the best teams, you know, in terms of seed in the game. And that's what is, is happening here. Ball stripped from McLean. He wants a foul call. There was none. You're right. As things have turned out, selection committee has done a heck of a job. They really have. And, and this was probably their most difficult year in, in terms of selection because there were so many good teams. But you, when you get one and two for the regional final, that's what you want. Eric Anderson, three-pointer. Well, I knew coming out of the timeout that Indiana was going to be patient. I didn't think the three-point shot was going to be taken. But they were really patient, and I thought they were getting some good defensive pressure on the part of UCLA, too. Anderson has 15. McLean. See, Indiana had a possible opportunity break there, and they're not going to try to risk that right now. That basket they made on that fast break was a big break. Almost tapped in by Graham, and now taken away from Nover. Edney to Madkins. Oh, that's, a, that's good in one. No question about it. There's no way Chris Reynolds was anywhere in there. Chris Reynolds trying to draw the charge is called for the block. Now watch him try to step over to do that, and he just he didn't get there in time. And he was trying to get to, to an established position. And that's you a see, pretty good job by Gerald Madkins. Yeah, it is. He, I mean, he takes it strong because uh, right there, Chris Reynolds was, was not maintaining position. He was trying to establish it, and the officials didn't feel he got there in time. First of the game on Reynolds. Cheney out. Bailey is in for Indiana. Well, I'm sure right here you've got a good ball handler and Bailey coming in, but Cheney was starting to get a little winded, and he took a long jump shot. Madkins makes it a three-point play, and off the UCLA bench comes Sean Tarver. You know, mentioned uh, Philadelphia just a few moments ago and while I'm thinking of it our director Sandy Grossman his son Dean is laid up in Philadelphia feeling a bit under the weather and we want to send along our best wishes to Dean absolutely for a quick recovery see a little more pressure out here a little bit of a trapping defense Damon Staley penetrating and feeding Nover that's an immediate effect of the change that was just made coach Herrick got caught when he, he made the change to get in uh, get Mackins out all of a sudden, you get Bailey and a better ball handler than you have on the part of Calvert Chain, and it worked to Indiana's advantage that time. Oh, he turned his ankle. And Murray has grabbed his right foot. That's already got a, a band on it, and he rolled it. It first looked like he slipped when he went down, but obviously he turned it. Watch the left ankle. Watch it when he comes down. Sorry, it's the right one. You see right there, he stepped right on Chris Reynolds' foot. Boy, and it just gave. He's got a big uh, wrap on it already. But he knows how important he is to his team. Now, we'll see whether or not this slows him down because he was scoring pretty well. He was like three for four and a half. Eight second half points out of his total of 12. Well, they're going to find out. They're going to try to jump the ball into him. With his own rebound, back outside, Edney's three in and out. But they're getting some second shots opportunity. Murray forcing it back up, and that doesn't go, and here come the Hoosiers. Good move to the basket by Chris Reynolds, and he draws the foul. It's a strong move. The defense has got to do a much better job on the UCLA part of stepping over, cutting people off. Chris Reynolds went around, and O'Bannon never did anything to get there, but he got the foul. You see some substitutions being made. Tracy Murray going out with his fourth foul. Well, you don't get any help on defense, and your teammates are wonder where is my help? O'Bannon, well, first of all, they normally call it. They didn't, so he gets away with it. And Tracy Murray tries to get there in time, and Reynolds was able to get up, kind of double clutch it a little bit, enough time to give Tracy Murray his fourth foul. Murray, UCLA's leading scorer in the tournament with four. Butler also has four. Madkins has three. Oh, 
Chris Reynolds shot 56% from the line during the regular season. He hit two out of two that trip. He spoke those like he knew how to be a shooter. Now you know that the guy that's got to get the ball, if UCLA is going to be able to break the slide here a little bit, is, is Don Chaney. Don McLean. And in order for them to do that, they've got to move it around because McLean has got Reynolds on him. They've got to get him the ball. Martin with the loose ball into the lane. Wild shot. And the foul is on number 20, Greg Grant. That's his first. Well, all of a sudden, UCLA is starting to get some second shots, and I'm sure that's of concern to, to Bob Knight. If you can get those second shots, then Jim Harrison has a good chance to get himself back in easily. But they, the other thing they've got to do, Greg, is just rebound the basket. Big offensive rebound. O'Bannon got an inner count. And O'Bannon will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. See, those are the kinds of things they've got to do. Get in there and fight. They've got to start scratching now because they are not able to generate any offense from the outside. You know, good effort. Talking about getting a rebound. Strong rebound there by Ed O'Bannon. Loses it partially. Strong enough to get it in the basket. Got some of his players on the side, on the bench. They're excited. You can see Matkins was up and saying that's the thing. You know, just getting some encouragement. 62-47. Indiana leads it. As we come up on 12 and a half to play in the game. That's a blocking foul called on Ed O'Bannon. Matt Nover took it strong along the baseline. UCLA is doing the right thing, except containing. If you put pressure on in a full court situation, you've got to be careful about going for steals because if there's any kind of trapping situation, once the opposition pushes it up, as Indiana did at that time, Matt Nova gets a chance to get a play because there's just not enough people back defensively. Indiana now 16 for 19 from the free throw line. One of the things Indiana routinely do, does is they outshoot their opponents from the foul line. They've, they've, out, they've made more free throws than their opponents have even shot. Derek Martin fouled as he tried to get past his man, Greg Graham. And that's three on Graham. But for UCLA, that's good because that's the penalty. You get the one and one right here. So that's good. They get a chance to score with, you know, without time going off the clock. This series, this UCLA-Indiana series, is tied at five. They've played two tournament games, and each team has won one. I remember playing them in the, um, back some time ago, that is. <laughs> 1976 in the semifinals uh, of the Final Four. They had Marcus Johnson and Richard Washington, and they were always a team that you had to be aware of because you know, they had all those great players. Fortunately for Indiana, that uh, the guys were able to pull it off. 65-51, your team won that game. I don't remember scores. I remember who won and lost. I have no idea about scores. Tracy Murray with four personals back into the lineup. Don McLean will get a rest. Get him, just get McLean a break here. He, he needs a breather. And Jim Herrick stepping up the defensive pressure even more. Gotta watch that one. That time I thought Bailey got away with a little bit of an offensive foul. Nova. Right around O'Bannon. Boy, he, O'Bannon just never moved. I mean, Nova's a little bit uh, deceptive. And, and O'Bannon, I thought, would be able to get back to him, but he just never moved his feet. Tracy Murray's in the game, and you know why he's in there, and I'm sure Indiana will be aware of that. Fighting for position down low with Nova on his back. You got that shot right there. We talked about it. Martin had made it. O'Bannon. And no one underneath for the Bruins. to the basket that foul is on number 15 Derek Martin if you notice the fouls with UCLA now are, are reaching foul now now this is you got to wonder about our guys starting to, to get tired and it looks to me like UCLA is starting to get a little winded that's why all the substitutions by Jim Harris 11 22 to play in the game Indiana in the lead things are different 
The all-new Pontiac Grand Am proves it. Things are better because no import at its price can match the power of its 16-valve engine and the control of its standard anti-lock brakes. Not a cord, not Camry, no one. In fact, Consumer's Digest named the Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac's new Grand Am, a new kind of excitement. the Energizer. They keep going and going. Right now, save 25% on Goodyear Eagle ST and Goodyear Invicta GL. That's right, 25% on two of our best-selling all-season radials. It's another reason we say the best tires in the world and in your neighborhood have Goodyear written all over them. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer, the first razor with a blade that flexes to trace every curve on your face. Compared to other razors, Tracer puts more of the blade edge against your skin. For real faces, just like yours. Tracer from Schick traces every curve on your face. He could have had the 60-foot sailboat. The house on the 18th green. But all Ned Crowley ever really wanted was a home on the range. At Dean Witter, our retirement plans are as individual as the people who dream. We measure success one investor at a time. Well, boys, how do you like the new backyard? Where's the perfect family? Let's go to my house. Where life is hassle-free. I'm grounding myself for three weeks. <laughs> Come over to Davis Rules Wednesday. Indiana in the lead, and here are some of the reasons why. Normally, McLean and Murray in the tournament so far have averaged 42 points between them. They've totaled 18 today, and Indiana has owned the backboards. They've owned the backboards. They've been able to make... Murray got out of the game early offensively, and then he struggled to get back in the first half. In the second half, he came off pretty good. Then he got tired and he turned his ankle a little bit, and Indiana played considerable attention to him. So that's why UCLA's have trouble getting baskets. Bailey, back outside, and then back to Bailey. I'll tell you why that's a smart play. Because Chris Reynolds is not as good a shooter as Damon Bailey, and, and Chris Reynolds had a wide open jump shot and just waited till Bailey got open, and Bailey made the initial pass. That's smart basketball. Bailey has 19 points. And here's Murray, and he's fouled by Eric Anderson. That's a good adjustment on the part of UCLA. What they've done with Tracy Murray is take him to the other side of the court. You know, I talk about swinging the basketball instead of swinging it over the, on the perimeter. They just lobbed it over the top, and there's no way for the help to get there in time. And that's why Murray has struggled scoring because of the help. As UCLA makes substitutions, you and I were talking during the timeout about a total absence of an outside game from UCLA. A perfect example of that is Murray, who hit three out of five the other night from three-point land. And in fact, the three-point shot's a major part of his game. He's just attempted one today, and he's missed that one. He hadn't been able to get the shots the way he likes to, Greg. If he can get them in rhythm, it's one thing. But he's caught one. I recall he took it. He was coming away from the basketball and had to square to shoot it. That's a hard shot to shoot. So Indiana's done a good job of keeping him from getting the ball in his shooting rhythm. Coming up next, Kentucky and Duke. And two of the better coaches in the country. Yeah, and Mike Krzyzewski and Rick Pitino, you definitely have two of the better coaches. Mike Krzyzewski, I think most people know about it. If you don't, this is one of the guys that is probably considered by most one of the best coaches in all of collegiate basketball, looking for his fifth consecutive time to the Final Four. Rick Pitino doing a great job turning that program around. Matt Nover, right around Murray, who has four fouls. That's exactly what that was. Murray can't afford to get his fifth foul. 70 to 50, Indiana by 20 with 10.20 to play. Murray, short with the left hand, tried to throw up the follow, didn't get there. Indiana going right back at Murray. Good job that time by Indiana, bring the ball back out. If you don't have anything, you need to rush shot. Bailey for three. Oh, and there's oh. Andrew. 
Oh boy, then he quit for what? Murray three pointer. That's short. That's the air ball. Oh. I mean, from the time it left his hand, that ball had no chance. He's looking at the official, looking for a foul call. Jim Herrick looking for something. He hadn't been able to generate that. Jim Herrick has not been able to generate any offense. And in talking to his staff, they felt that defensively they would be able to have some switches and get some things to go for them. But they haven't been able to get switches and steal so they can go and get some easy baskets. Sean Tarver in for Tracy Murray. Damon Bailey gets a rest for the Hoosiers. I think uh, Sean Tarver came in for Tracy Murray because I saw him as he tried to make his initial move down and he was very ginger on that ankle. Nova. Nova trying to be a star. <laughs> I mean, that's a power jump ball. <laughs> Nova has 12. Now remember, this is the guy that got 13 points as they played against the LSU with Shaquille O'Neal. So he obviously has a lot of confidence in his ability to score. McLean gets the bucket. And that's his first bucket this half. So, you know, he's somebody that has sorely been missing. We talked about him at the top of the show. This club here is down 18, so they've got to get him in the offense. They didn't do a very good job of it in the first half. You see only just two of their last 12 attempts from the field. And over again. Here comes Madkin. And Edney down low. Understandably trouble with the shot. You've got to be able to get that one in the basket. If you don't, there's no need to take that kind of shot. Cheney. I don't have to tell you, that that's when Indiana rolls. You know, they start slow, but when they get in the rhythm, they start rolling. Coming up on eight minutes for the game. And UCLA standing around on offense. Matkins for three. And that's what it, he hasn't been able to do. Now you can get Don McLean on this side, and you've got to honor him. You can get the ball back inside. Matkins has 14. Down low. Butler said he was holding me, but Butler instead draws his fifth. That is five on Miss Butler. Well, you got watch. You get yourselves in position, and you get a chance to see right here. Butler has got his arm around uh, Matt Nova, and the officials right there calling him. And you're talking about somebody frustrated. You see McLean just takes a little shot, just tries to get out of there, but hadn't been able to get on track. Mitchell Butler just fouled out, didn't have any points. Can score. His offense has been has been suspect. He's more noted for his defense. Hadn't been able to even get that going. But this gentleman has no points in the first and 12 in the second, five of seven in the second half. Matt Nover, a 6'8 junior, averaging seven points in a game in the tournament. He's going to improve those numbers today. And let's take time with 7.54 to play. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS. Okay, now let's beat the stars in the other game in town. The Oldsmobile Drive to the Final Four Celebrity. Where the deals and values are spectacular on every new old. Example, the new Achieva with Smart Lease. Just $1.99 per month for 48 months and no down payment gets you an Achieva. With anti-lock brakes, automatic transmission and air. The game clock is running, so net a great deal now. They came from different cultures, from different worlds, to create Expo 92. To help them work together, Xerox designed the largest local area network in Europe, linking thousands of people to share ideas and create the documents that let people discover the best in each other. Putting it together. Networking, scanning, printing. Xerox, the document company. It's one of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth. Relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction 
the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker steak. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker steak quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Tie game, back after this. Twist off 7-Up Cap and win as the Uncola celebrates the 100th year of basketball. Collect all the 7-Up Caps you can, because if you spell Y-E-A-R, you win a $10,000 college scholarship or win a Spalding mini basketball instantly. So collect your Uncola Caps and win. 7-Up employees not eligible. <laughs> Win part of a million dollars in scholarships from 7-Up, the Uncola. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Welcome back to the fifth, Greg Gumbel, along with Quinn Buckner and with Indiana. A pretty good lead. You have to say that this is the best that they've played in quite a while. Well, I think it is the best they've played in a long time. They, they're playing with so much more confidence, Greg. They thought coming into the season that they would have a good chance. I thought they would at least get to the regional finals, but I didn't know they were going to be this good. They have had the answer for UCLA on both sides. Offensively, they've been able to find other people to get in the game. And defensively, they've just swarmed all over UCLA. Edney misses the three, and there's Henderson back in the line and on that, grabbing another rebound. And that's one of the reasons that they're better, because Allen Henderson is a much better rebounding one of the rebounder. One of the knocks on Indiana had been their inside play. But this young man has blocked shots, gotten rebounds, and he's also an inside threat. So that's one of the reasons they're better than they were last year. And, you know, they, they lost in the first round of the uh, regionals last year. Henderson with 12 rebounds, but a giveaway right there. And when, uh, what I wanted to say, this is virtually the same team, and you just add Henderson to it. Sean Carter's three-pointer is good. Eight for Tarver, 78-58, Indiana with a 20-point lead and seven minutes to play. Tarver with the kick, and Indiana will get a new 45 on the shot clock. All of a sudden, it looks like Chris Reynolds misses something that can happen to you. You've got a guy that's going good. You've got to be careful about forcing the ball into him because UCLA knows it. And every time they'll try to go to Matt Nova, who's been playing well, you guarantee UCLA knows that Nova can score. So they'll try to find a way to get the ball out of his hands. Meeks and Reynolds in the backcourt for Indiana. Henderson, Nova, and Cheney up front. Open the court up. What they did was open it up with a little back pick. One of the things Indiana likes to do, set a back pick, and if you, do, if you switch it, then the guy may pop out for a jump shot. If you don't, the results are just as you saw. The plane shot doesn't go. Madkins has the loose ball and tries to go back up with it and foul. If you look on the right side of your screen, you'll see that there'll be a little back pick. And you see that the, the defense just doesn't react. Actually, what it was is Don McLean just fell asleep, expecting someone to step out, allowing Calvert Cheney to step in there. But Indiana normally back picks over there, and I think that's what Murray, was, I mean, McLean was expecting to happen, and it didn't, and he let his man go. And McLean and Tarver were left looking at each other. Stacy Murray back in for UCLA, playing with four fouls. Tomorrow, in the Midwest, Memphis State against Cincinnati, and in the Southeast, Michigan against Ohio State. Well, the Memphis State-Cincinnati game, I've seen both of those teams play, and they'll be playing at up temp tempo. But Michigan, Ohio State, Ohio State won the conference, the Big Ten Conference this year with Indiana losing to Purdue, but a lot of people think that Ohio State is pretty good. But I tell you what, you cannot overlook Michigan because those men, young men, can play some basketball. They are in a spectacular effort when you consider Chris Weber didn't have his normal production, and they beat a very good Oklahoma State team last night. And I thought that would be a good test for Michigan because Oklahoma State can, can run up and, and they'll play the up and slow down tempo, and Michigan was able to, to match that and obviously came away with the victory. Allen Henderson. Henderson has eight points. Tarver, his second straight three. Well, maybe Calvert Cheney would figure that, that, uh, that Tarver can make that shot because he hadn't come out to guard him yet. And the foul at midcourt on Martin. That's two on Derek Martin. Quinn, should Indiana go on and win this game? Presents more interesting matchups in the first game of that, or one semifinal game of the Final Four, whether it's Kentucky or Duke. 
Well, it does pre present that. Kentucky and Indiana, is a, that's a rivalry that has gone on for many, many years. So, that you know, that makes it uh, a, a good show from that perspective. But when you're talking about playing against Mike Krzyzewski at Duke, you're talking about the guy that gave Mike Krzyzewski and, and, and Bob Knight gave Mike Krzyzewski a lot of the things he's learned in addition to some other coaches that Mike has been around. Like Hank Merry Eisen. Christmas, Quinn. <laughs> it's March or what? <laughs> it's, this must be March Madness here. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. 84, 63, five and a half to play. Madkin. Gerald Madkins has 18 points. Gerald Madkins wasn't able to really continue going offensively early, and that got him in some trouble in terms of what, what UCLA wanted to do, Greg, because they were never able to get the ball inside. And I didn't think that was going to be a bigger problem because I thought UCLA would be bigger targets. They just couldn't do it because Indiana played good defense. That's four fouls on Gerald Madkins. Who has really been the only one to score with any consistency for the Bruins today. Well, it, actually, he started scoring. Uh, he missed a shot, and then he, he got going. But he wasn't able to get going on the side of either McLean or Murray one. So they were never able to get off. And, and that's what's important. Not only that he scores, but that he gives his, his scorers an opportunity to score. And he didn't do that. Kentucky and Duke coming up next. You see Kentucky bombing from outside. And I'll tell you what, overall team quickness, Duke is as good as anybody in the country. I mean, they like to uh, turn their defense and their offense and just run it by you. McLean fouled as he took it down low. And the foul is on Jamal Meeks. And I'm sure the conversation with Jamal Meeks is, look, there is no need to, to foul at this point. If somebody's got a break, stay in position, but don't reach. The last time Indiana played UCLA in a regional final was 1987. And Indiana went on to win its fifth national championship, third under Bob Knight. That's when they played... Uh, Syracuse down in, in New Orleans. And Keith Smart made his jump shot. John McClain, just three of 12 from the floor today. That's the, that's the story because you're taking the two best scores in UCLA history right out of the basketball game. They, they've never done on top. Murray with the steal and the layup. Okay, okay. And the foul in the backcourt is on that man flat on his back, Sean Tarver. Sean Tarver is the only guy that's been, been going here lately. When you think about Duke, you, you think about a team. That this team, Duke, played without Bobby Hurley for a while, without Grant Hill. And, and the thing that I like about them is that they're so versatile. I mean, they can go a lot of different lineups on you. They can go big when they have to. Get Cher Cherokee Parks in the game. So I would suspect you'll see a little bit of that to try to force a mismatch situation on the part of Kentucky. But what Kentucky will do to combat that, is they'll flat out go and shoot threes, and they'll force, if you're guarding one of their shooters, Pelfrey or John Pelfrey, they'll force you to come out and guard him. And that's not something Parks is going to be able to do that easily. McLean with the turnaround. And if you get the outside game going in Kentucky, then you've got to deal with Jamal Mashburn on the inside. Well, Jamal Mashburn is, is a great player. And I think that's going to be a good matchup for him because he's got to be played by Christian Leitner. And everybody knows Christian Leitner for 6'11". He's got good size and quickness. And we're getting a lot of whistles here as UCLA goes for the basketball. That one is on Derek Martin, and that's his third. There's Jim Herrick in his fourth year at UCLA and he's the first UCLA coach with 21 seasons in each of his first four years but at UCLA Quinn is it a failure if you don't make the final four well it's considered uh, a, a, a less than successful year if you don't get to the final four if you play there and Jim Herrick has talked about it you know the last six coaches that have been there haven't been there for four years because the only thing that the, the Bruin fans have become accustomed to is getting to the final four and, and winning that winning 10 national championships so from that perspective, some people may say no. From the record, I say it is a successful year because I don't think people thought that UCLA would get this one. Two losses to Southern Cal in the Pac-10 regular season. A loss to Notre Dame and a loss to Duke. 
The one that, that probably would bother them more than anything most people would think would be Notre Dame. But I thought Notre Dame as a team underachieved for the better part of the season. And when they played against great teams, they just played that much better. Matkins with a shot rejected underneath. That's Allen Henderson throwing that long left hand up there. So my point is that UCLA they had a very good year. 28 and 4 coming in today. Boy, that's when he's going your way. Martin had to come right to him and just, just got right out of his hand back to finish Cheney. Cheney has 19. And Sean Tartar across the lane. That doesn't fall for him. Back come the Hoosiers. Four on one. Cheney. UCLA just never even made an effort to get back, Greg. Murray. And it's all Hoosiers. Greg, I thought this game was going to be a, a, a six, eight point game at the max. And UCLA came out and couldn't buy a basket. And I got to tell you, Indiana played well, as you just see a, a foul taken on McLean. And that's another foul of frustration. And yeah, you've got to call that a frustration foul. But that, it was totally unwarranted. McLean has kind of been doing those kind of things all game. And they called it an intentional foul on him. It began with a little pushing and shoving out front with Cheney. This is a guy who was going out as the Pac-10's leading scorer, as well as UCLA's leading scorer. So you've got to consider that a pretty successful year. But there, the complaints on him have been that he has a tendency to get himself in little scraps like this. And when you're that good a player, you don't have, I don't think you should be wasting your time getting involved in that. That kind of play. You play as hard as you can. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Yeah. Nova puts two more on the board. 3.23 remaining between Indiana and a trip to Minneapolis. Cutlass Supreme, a car intelligently engineered to free your eyes, your hands, your senses. Introducing the new Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. The look may change, but the spirit remains the same. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Celathon. It's your best shot for a great deal now. Think about who you'll be driving around over the next, say, seven days. That's how long your dealer said it would take before he could fix your brakes. At Midas, we can fix them right the same day you bring in your car. Midas, because your brakes can't wait. Right now at Pizza Hut, get a supreme pizza loaded with six delicious toppings like mouth-watering pepperoni and green peppers. Call Pizza Hut Delivery and get a medium supreme for $7.99 and any other medium for just four bucks more. Call now. Come on, Pizza Hut, To order the 1992 NCAA Championship Highlight Video, call 1-800-999-VIDEO. That's 1-800-999-VIDEO for the 1992 NCAA Championship Video. 
back at the pit. You know, with each game in the tournament, we have to say goodbye to a great group of competitors. And today we say so long to one of our favorites of all time. He was an All-American <laughs> at Indiana, a star in the NBA uh, for 10 years, and a class act at the broadcast table for us at CBS. Quinn Buckner goes on to continue his NBA broadcasting work. And Quinn, we wish you the best, and uh, we'll miss you. Thank you very much. You guys are too much. You've been trying all day to get me. You finally got me. Thanks, Andrew. Andrea, you got that right. I wish I could tell you how many people at CBS have called and said pass on our best wishes to your partner who has uh, who has contributed an awful lot to us, taught us an awful lot about the game of basketball, and uh, of course we value that uh, plus his friendship. And you know I'm right up there at the top of the pack. Guys, don't don't make me water here. This is <laughs> I appreciate it. Don't worry, that's all you're getting. <laughs> Calbert Cheney with a two. <laughs> Calbert Cheney with 23. I mean, why we have this opportunity? I'm in a debt of gratitude, to CBS, and all the people who've just been wonderful for me. The only reason I got a career is because you people have been so kind and, and have been a friend. And Greg, you've been a part of that. And, and Teddy and Neil, I could go down the line. I just thank you very much, all of you, for, for your support. Edney turns a bad trip into the lane into two points. And the whistle blows with 210 to play. And that's on Gerald Madkins. And that's number five on Madkins. Yeah, I think it is. You know, he's, he's played a good game and, and he'll. He'll have a good career when he goes to the next level, I think. I mean, I've talked to some NBA people about him, and they think he can play there because he can shoot it. And if you come in at the next level, the NBA, the thing you've got to be able to do is defend. And he can do that first and foremost. You know, it's a tough time for him. You know, you go out of here, but you can hear uh, as he's going out and getting some, some hugs and relationships uh, put together at the end. Gerald Madkins closes out his career at UCLA. Meanwhile, Calvert Cheney getting quite a reception on the Indiana bench. Calvert Cheney with a 23 point effort today. And now Matt Nover. Who had 16. And Jamal meets at the line. Greg, you know, I have talked to Coach Bob Knight many times, and I had the sneaking suspicion he felt this team could get to the Final Four. I mean, you know, you can just talk to people and just tell how they, how they talked about them, and, and he talked about deficiencies with, with, with a, a sense of these are things that are correctable and they're things that will make us difficult to believe. So those, some people may be surprised. I'm not nearly as surprised as probably most people because I just heard that sense of, of probably getting there and talking with him. Blocking foul on number 30, Todd Leary, a 6'3 junior, seeing his first action, and Bob Knight still hard at work teaching on the sidelines. We've talked about this before. The season-ending loss to Purdue cost them the number one seed, cost Indiana the number one seed in the Southeast. It may have been a blessing in disguise for Indiana to travel out to Boise. Well, not that any of the regionals are, are, are diff not difficult, but I thought so for sure, because they, going out to the, the Southeast would have been, a, a, I thought, a, a difficult route. This way they come in here, they've got some people that they know that they can play against. And I just think there's a little less pressure coming in here for these young men coming in as the number two seed as opposed to the number one seed. But the loss also made these guys focus a, a great deal more on what they had to do and how hard they had to play to just have any kind of success during the tournament. Coming up on the post game, we'll have more from the studio as Ed O'Bannon commits the foul, reaching over Jamal Wilkes. Two-way talk with Jerry Tarkanian. Oh, is that a happier hair? And what about that big piece of gum he's got? My goodness. That's why he hurt his chin. Trying to chew that gum. And on the other side of the court, there's always a different reaction. Yeah, it is. Because for some of the guys, it, I mean, you get here and it, it's like, all right, we got a shot to get some things done. And UCLA had had such a great year that they felt that they were smack dab back into the, you know, the final four. The big round of applause was for breaking 100, which says something about Indiana, because once they get 80 points, it's one thing. But I told you, 7.58 to go, they had 79 points, so they've been able to shoot the ball great at it. They've been averaging almost 90 a game for the tournament as Edney gets the follow. Leary in number 
50 Lindemann is also in the Indiana lineup right now. And yeah, Larry is a guy that can really shoot the ball. Lindemann is a, is a freshman uh, from Michigan that they think is going to be a pretty good player. He, when I first saw him, he, you know, he really struggled because he played in competition that was not as tough as this is. But now he's, he's starting to come along. He's somebody they have great confidence in for the next three, few years. Let's take a moment to tell you the coordinating producer of NCAA basketball on CBS is Bob Dekas. Today's West Regional Final was produced by Mark Wolf and directed by Sandy Grossman. The senior producer of CBS Sports is Ed Gorin, and the executive producer of CBS Sports is the proud new papa of a baby boy, Ted Shaker. Forty-five seconds. got himself on the scorebook with a miss and I didn't get a chance to get some with the some foul shots. Our Chevrolet players of the game today. Matt Nover from Indiana. Gerald Madkins from UCLA. And Ed O'Bannon leaves the court. <laughs> You're talking about having a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> the fuss this week. The fuss this week. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> was Bob Knight playfully taking a whip to the backside of Calvert Cheney. Calvert returns the favor. Not only returns the favor, really no chance that there was any ill intent when those two guys were playing. And that was what Bob Knight was trying to show with that little movement on the other side. Henderson saves it. No need to shoot it. We're going to get it to the freshman who was fouled with 3.3 to play. Well, we know there was no ill intent. But let's just see what comes of those latest pictures, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> you can always find someone to complain. 105-79. You know, the thing that, that really has helped catapult Bob Knight and his Indiana Hoosiers into, a, I think, a higher emotional state, I think was the benching, oddly enough, of Jamal Meeks and uh, Eric Anderson, because they were the two seniors that wanted to make sure that they've got everything going. And, uh, <laughs> and, and they did. They were able to get them psyched up, ready to play, and on their way to Minneapolis. of the West Regional and are the first members of the Final Four in Minneapolis next week. It is complete second seed Indiana with a win over Florida State Thursday night and a 106 79 victory over UCLA here this afternoon. Champions of the West, the Indiana Hoosiers. With Quinn Buckner and Andrea Joyce, I'm Greg Gumbel, Pat O'Brien back in New York after this. Yo, Simba here back with the outside game. I got Dan and Dave, the world's two greatest athletes, taking them outside. I want you to meet some of my homies here, man. Hey, Yo, hey, Mr. Bill, hey, T-Bone. Hey, Big Way! Oh. You don't do that? You 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 play the game. Watch this. We got the black top shoe. We don't need anything else, man. Yo, man, can I get the ball? I just got the greatest athletes in the world. I got the greatest athletes in the world. We rock black top. Bill for the outside game. I'm ready to play. Y'all ready to play? What entrepreneurs do is they find an idea and then they risk everything every day. 
beautifully designed contemporary fashions from traditional African fabrics. We're based in Oakland, but we do a lot of business with L.A. and Seattle. What I recommended for her was the AT&T Small Business Option Area Code Plan, which gives them an automatic 10% discount for one or two area codes that they call most. Every customer has a goal. What we want to do is help them to achieve that goal. We can make a difference. AT&T, call us. Love her, hold her, and remember our simple formula. At Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. How fast can you change a John Deere tricycler mower from a mulcher to a rear bagger? Then a side discharger? Under 10 seconds. I think I could have done it faster. Hmm. The tricycler mower from John Deere. Oldsmobile knows that all your roads won't be sunny roads. That's why the all-new Oldsmobile 88 Royale LS offers you advanced traction engineering. The combination of anti-lock brakes, traction control, and road-holding front-wheel drive. The three elements to beat the elements. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. The Oldsmobile drive to the Final Four Celathon. It's your best shot for a great deal now. American Fred Couples. He's been dominating the tour. Now he goes after a tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Amazing to me always how quickly they can get a hat that tells them where they're going next uh, in this uh, business. But Indiana is going to the final four in Minneapolis as they, uh, boy, I thought UCLA would show up today, but they sure didn't do that. Let's move ahead, though. We were talking last night in the taxi cab. Bobby Knight just loves this. He's got him primed and he's setting the trap. He's back in the final four. The last three times he's gone to the final four, he's won the whole thing, setting the trap. And if Duke wins the next game, I think you have set up Indiana Duke, one of the great storylines in the history of this tournament when they would meet next Saturday. Over four games, our research people tell me, 22-point margin of victory. The, the key here was when you take a look at the 42-point turnaround from November to now, they just had great balance, great intensity. They got off quick rebounding. They got off quick getting the points to the right people. One of the greatest wins ever for Bob Knight. And we talk about how he's focused his team and focused the attention on him. Is that a factor here? I, I think it is. I think he felt that that was the way to, to bring this team along. And, Pat, you know, people talk about him getting too much credit and stuff. He's that good. I mean, he's every bit as good as everybody makes him to be. He proves it all the time. And the kids love him, right, Digger? They you really saw do it, love yeah. him. And let me say this. Either game, Mike, I disagree. Because Kentucky, they lost that close game to Kentucky. And I'm telling you right now, they'll take Duke or Kentucky for the championship. Well, he's standing by right now with uh, Quinn Buckner out in Albuquerque. Let's go there. Quinn, you're on. Coach Knight, your team just came out and played a tremendous game. UCLA, it looked like a pretty good matchup. Did you, know, did you have a feeling your guys would come, come out and play this well? Well, we're used to occasionally when you were playing. <laughs> and uh, kind of reminiscent of when you were playing. We had some kids that really, uh, you know, we weren't a very good team two weeks ago when we played. And I think it's a tremendous credit to these kids, uh, the underclassmen that, that picked up where we hadn't had really good leadership. and got us going in the tournament to, to get started at Boise. And then I'll tell you, uh, with that start that we got from our underclassmen, Quinn, I remember when you were a sophomore and you and Steve Green were our captains. And uh, these underclassmen came back and really did a good job. And then Meeks and Anderson really picked up. And, and I got to give those kids a lot of credit because they could have kind of sunk. I wasn't real easy on Meeks and Anderson after the final regular season game. Then when we got back in the tournament play, I told him, I said, hey, you're going to play when we need you, and you got to play your butts off when you play. And the two kids as seniors have come back in these four games and just played extremely well. That's great for them. Well, Coach, I want to tell you congratulations. Good luck to you in Minneapolis. And, Pat, back to you. All right, Quinn, thank you. We knew he'd get that interview, right, from Bob <laughs> Knight. It looks like he's having a little fun celebrating uh, going to the Final Four. We'll be back here in a minute. Stay with us. Jerry Tarkanian coming up. You can ski a live volcano, take a dip in the Colorado, take your bike way up in the blue, catch a tidal wave and go, you can slide without the snow, but you've never done nothing like a diet too. Full tilt taste, you won't believe it's a diet. You can leap, you can fly, take a ride in the sky, but you've never done nothing like a diet too. 
Every summer weekend, millions of the smartest guys in America fire up their Murray mowers. What makes them so smart is that Murray's rated one of the best in quality and performance, with a two-year warranty backed by 10,000 service dealers at a price that's about half of other top quality mowers, which makes Murray mowers tough as they come, any way you cut it. The morning belongs to Speed Stick. It's 110% protection against wetness and odor that lasts all day. No better way to face the day you find it. It is one of the most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. The Big Q is one top motor oil. Welcome back to New York City. I'm Pat O'Brien. Next on our menu, our second game of the day, Kentucky and Duke. For a preview of this game, let's go live now to Vern Lundquist, who's in Philadelphia at the Spectrum. Vern, you're on. Okay, Patrick, the University of Kentucky Wildcat team arrived here at the Spectrum just over an hour ago. They face a Duke team, and both coaches agree on the key to the game. Our press is going to be a factor. I think the only, the only way we win this game is is by forcing turnovers and getting them out of their offense. They're a dynamite team, they're superbly coached, and uh, it, it will be a great challenge for us, but one that, uh, that I think we're up for. One of the main keys for us offensively is the ability to break their press without turning the ball over, but also to score against their press. I think if you only break it and, be, and you're glad that you haven't turned it over, they'll continue to press. I'm joined by Lenny Elmore. Len, breaking it is one thing. How do you go about that? Well, certainly you want to be able to attack it, get it to your best playmaker, and kick it out and run. And for Duke, what they did against Iowa in the second round, you see Christian Leitner and Bobby Hurley right there. They're the keys. Leitner looks for Hurley on the inbound, but when he can't get it to him, Duke is fortunate to have other...